But, you may say, original paintings are still unique. They look different from how they look on the television screen or on postcards. Reproductions distort. Only a few facsimiles don't. Take this original painting in the National Gallery. Only what you are seeing is still not the original. I'm in front of it. I can see it. This painting by Leonardo is unlike any other in the world. The National Gallery has the real one. It isn't a fake, it's authentic. If I go to the National Gallery and look at this painting, somehow I should be able to feel this authenticity. The Virgin of the Rocks by Leonardo da Vinci. It is beautiful for that alone. Nearly everything that we learn or read about art encourages an attitude, an expectation, rather like that. The National Gallery catalogue is for art experts. The entry on this painting is about 14 pages long, densely written. They are about who commissioned the painting, legal squabbles, who owned it, its likely date, the pedigree of its owners. Behind this information lie years of research. What for? to prove beyond any shadow of doubt that it is a genuine Leonardo, and to prove that an almost identical painting in the Louvre is in fact a replica. French art historians try to prove the opposite. For this drawing by Leonardo, the Americans wanted to pay two and a half million pounds. Now it hangs in a room by itself like a chapel behind bulletproof perspex. The lights are kept low so as to prevent the drawing from fading. But why is it so important to preserve and display this drawing? It's acquired a kind of new impressiveness, but not because of what it shows, not because of the meaning of its image. It's become mysterious again because of its market value, and this market value depends upon it being genuine. And now it is here like a relic in a holy shrine. I don't want to suggest that there is nothing left to experience before original works of art, except a certain sense of awe, because they have survived, because they are genuine, because they are absurdly valuable. A lot more is possible. But only if art is stripped of the false mystery and the false religiosity which surrounds it. This religiosity, usually linked with cash value, but always invoked in the name of culture and civilization, is in fact a substitute for what paintings lost when the camera made them reproducible. The National Gallery sell more reproductions of this Leonardo cartoon than of any other picture. But what are the meanings these reproductions acquire in each home when they are hung or pinned to the wall? And how different are all these meanings from its original one, when Leonardo first worked on it to work out an idea for a painting? The camera, by making the work of art transmittable, has multiplied its possible meanings and destroyed its unique original meaning. Have works of art gained anything by this? They have lost and gained. Let me try to explain how. The most important thing about paintings themselves is that their images are silent, still. I can't demonstrate the stillness, for the lines on your screen are never still. And in a sense, the pages of a book are never still. But I can demonstrate the silence. Occasionally, this uninterrupted silence and the stillness of a painting can be very striking.
The experience of this has almost nothing to do with what anybody teaches about art. It's as if the painting, absolutely still, soundless, becomes a corridor connecting the moment it represents with the moment at which you are looking at it. And something travels down that corridor at a speed greater than light, throwing into question our way of measuring time itself. Because paintings are silent and still, and because their meaning is no longer attached to them, but has become transmittable, paintings lend themselves to easy manipulation. They can be used to make arguments or points which may be different, very different, from their original meaning. And because paintings are essentially silent and still, the most obvious way of manipulating them is by using movement and sound. The camera moves in to remove a detail of a painting from the whole. Its meaning changes. An allegorical figure becomes a pretty girl anywhere. From being part of a strange poetical world of metamorphosis, a dog can be turned into a pet, not unlike the dog of his master's voice. The meaning of a painting shown on film or television can be changed even more radically. This is a painting by Bruegel, or rather a reproduction of a painting by Bruegel, of the road to Calvary. If you look at the whole painting, Bruegel's intention is fairly clear. In the right foreground are Mary and John and the mourners of Christ. Christ carrying the cross is in the middle distance, carried forward by the crowd, which is making its way to the place of the crucifixes, far away on the right, where a circle of onlookers has already gathered. If you look at the whole picture, you see that it is about grief, about torture, and above all about the callousness, the eager inquisitiveness, the superstitious drive of the crowd. If it sets out to be a religious painting, it is an oddly secular one. But the difficulty is that on a screen, if you keep the whole painting in view, you don't see very much. You have been waiting impatiently for the camera to go in to examine details. Yet, as soon as this happens, the comprehensive effect of the painting can be changed. For example, it is possible to isolate and show the details in a way that makes the painting look like a fairly straightforward devotional picture. <laughs> 